We are pleased now to welcome in reigning NWSL champion, reigning coach of the year in the NWSL with Gotham FC and 2024 coach of the year nominee, Gotham head coach Juan Carlos Amaros. Coach, welcome in. How are you? Very good. Very excited to be here with you again, guys. Us too, always. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. And we have this combo in the midst of NWSL playoffs. Gotham just defeated Portland 2-1 to advance to the semifinal of the playoffs. Um, you will play on the road at Washington this upcoming weekend. But between quarterfinals and semifinals, how's the team feeling right now? Well, I think the team is obviously happy to be where where we are, but at the same time, already focused on the next task ahead, which is obviously Washington away to get into that final. I think I'm very lucky to manage a group of fantastic people. That on top of that, they are they are winners, and you know, no time to relax. They are they are preparing hard for the next game for sure. Coach. I want to talk about the, the roster that you have on your team and kind of this year long narrative around Gotham, this maybe a silly concept of a, of a super team, mm -hmm. because going into this season before the big four signings, the roster already had like a Lynn Williams, a Mitch purse. And then the off season brings in a Rose Lavelle, Tierna Davidson, Crystal Dunn, Emily Sonnet. And the, the narratives start start chirping. They start evolving. You know, what's what does this mean for Gotham? They're our super team now. What does it mean if they don't get back to this point? All of these things. But there's also some, you know, maybe advantage, people think advantages, but there's also challenges in having maybe so many superstars on a roster. What's it been like for you, uh, you know, coaching and managing such a, a talented roster of players? Well, for me, it's a privilege and an honor, but at the same time, obviously, you know, I see them as people and, you know, you mentioned four of them. I think at the same time, we added to the roster Ella Stevens, Cassie Miller, uh, Sam Hyatt, Macy, that now she, she left. So we had to manage, obviously, the, the big change because there was... You know, eight players leaving, eight players coming in, and there was a lot of challenges in preseason because half of those new players they they weren't really here with the with the team. So it was difficult to start because you know you cannot start when you don't have the people. But I think mm -hmm. a credit needs to go to to those players, to the players that were here, the players that join us because everyone has done such an effort to you know to understand the style, to understand each other, to understand what we ask on the pitch, and for everyone to be on the same page and they start their roles, their responsibilities, their roles and responsibilities of the teammates. And I yeah, think yeah. They've, they've, been, they've been fantastic on how they've been gelling to, to perform every weekend, whatever, you know, obviously when you guys watch us on the weekend or when we are here at training. So I think the credit needs to go to, to every single one of them and to those players specifically. I think it's been really difficult because you know, on top of that window at the beginning with the Gold Cup, then they had to go to the Olympics, and those things are not easy to to manage, no. And on top of that, they've been really successful in in both competitions, went to the to to as far as they can go and, and win. And it's been, you know, I think it's been really challenging for them. But the level of performance they are showing is showing the the, the great, you know, the great players that that they are, no. Of course, coach, you're you're listing off all these incredible players and just making comments about how everyone impacts, right? Whether it's the superstars, uh, players that play internationally or players that come off the bench, everyone makes a difference on on your team. That's what has allowed you to have so much success. However, we always know that there's players that we're not talking about enough. So when you listen to attacking third or the media, who aren't we giving enough love to on your team? Well, no, I think uh, maybe, you know, I think it's everyone that goes there that always end up performing at such a high level. You, you know, obviously now there was players at the beginning of the year that maybe they weren't playing at all, like Ella, that now is obviously done fantastically well. Players that maybe weren't playing at the beginning of the last year, like Neely or, or the Liney, um, that maybe don't get you know, mention enough, but then, you know, I was very surprised today when, when I saw the nominations for some of the best players in the league and I didn't see, you know, we are the best team defending in the league. We have no defenders. I think Emily Sonnet's performance this year, for me, honestly, she's been the best, the best defender in the league. Uh, you know, I don't know if there is a, a 
maybe the line in Ilian that have played a lot of minutes, but how is Rose Lavelle not in that group of the five best midfielders in the league? And maybe I am watching a different game, but she's been outstanding for us, you know. So, but we don't really care about that, you know. Like we don't really care about the recognition individually. We want the team to be recognized. The best way to be recognized as a team is winning the championship again. I think every player is performing at such a high level that for me it's very difficult, honestly, to to choose between between who of them is gonna play. You know, we have players now performing at that standing level like like Mandy Freeman or it, it's, it's very difficult because then we have Jenna and Swanger and we have Jess Carter and we have Bruninha you know it's it's, it's 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 a privilege it's difficult but it's where you know where every coach wants to be you know in a position where you have so many good players that you know the other day for example Jenna came in changed the game Bruna came in changed the game and 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 they helped the team the team to win and to and to progress you know you know you got a lot of depth when uh, you got Jenna Nightsmire coming off the bench. <laughs> Bonkers. Mm -hmm. Crazy yeah. talented team. Um, but sticking with the coaching aspect of this, Juan Carlos, ayúdame, por favor, because anytime someone tries to go, maybe go on Google, uh, Google Juan Carlos Amoros, the Wikipedia starts at like 2011. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a story for you before then. Yeah. So tell me the story. What what what's the story of Juan Carlos getting into coaching? Maybe before 2011. Well, I I'm just like you know, it's something I always take a lot of pride. I don't come from you know a football family. Like we mm -hmm. had a a small business of construction, and you know, I always love with my dad, my grandma, and I always love football. So I always you know, like any kid, I play as much as I could and. You know, play not only on the pitch but video games. So I was watching games in the neighborhood, in the stadiums, and then suddenly, at 15 years old, I, you know, I got the, the opportunity to coach my little brother's team. And from that moment, I, I coached, played everywhere I could, everything that I could do with football. I was doing it because he was my passion, and you know, it, it kind of, it kind of went from there. I, you know, I tried to be a player, and I kind of made it in Scotland and in Holland, and. And by then I discovered the love for coaching and different cultures. You know, I think one thing that you understand from football when you've lived like in many countries as a half, like in Scotland, Holland, uh, England, uh, the US, I've traveled with Tottenham, a lot of countries like China, Denmark, like you understand how football is is part of the community in, in every part of the world. And I love people. Uh, so, so that's what... You know, once I started to get paid more for coaching than for playing, that's the that's the, the truth. Like I stopped playing, and and then in 2011 is probably where I came to America, and there I started to work and discover a little more about the women's game. And when I came back to Tottenham, I you know I was watching, so I was working obviously with Karen uh, with with the women's side and. You know, the rest is kind of where Wikipedia starts, no? So, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely another Juan. No, another Juan is the same Juan. I am I a am big believer that humans, we are built of our own experiences. And he made me who I am. And, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of my journey. And, yeah, that's a little bit of, of the story in a couple of minutes. I love I love that you mentioned your, your family and growing up and, and the construction, working with, with your, and your dad. I, I heard you mention... <laughs> video games in there yeah did you have a certain video game that you like playing yeah uh, that was uh, yeah of course i played football manager i played yeah. one game called pc football i was really good before the internet to to pro evolution soccer i used to win tournaments with my friends but then when i tried to come back to play fifa i had to i had to stop because i was getting frustrated so oh, no. football so, video so no super mario nothing like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did those too with my little brother who now is here with us. He's a coach too. Uh, but but no, I was mainly football. Everything had to be had to do with football. That was that's where where, where I was for sure. Football Your manager. Little, yeah, football manager. <laughs> the little brother that still coaches with you now is he the brother that you first coached growing yes. up? Yes, yes, he's my only brother. So yeah, he's uh, three, three, four years younger. So I was 15 when I started coaching him. He was 11, 12. So I coached him or his friends. And, and then, you know, the, we grew up together. So now they're obviously, you know, we went, he, we worked together for a little bit at Tottenham. He then coached in Spain and, and yeah, it's the same. 
You also mentioned that you played in Scotland a little bit. Yeah. Um, where on the pitch? Where could we have found you? Yeah, in that I was uh, when I grew up. I, I was a centre back. When I was playing in Scotland, I was I was a forward. Uh, very interesting football. No, I was playing there in. It's called the Lowland League or the Third Division for a club called Edinburgh City. You know, it was very very inter different approach for sure to what I what I experienced in Holland. That's that's for sure. Interesting. I, I can understand why you feel so strongly about the lack of Gotham defenders now on the end of your awards. And I don't and I don't disagree with you. Um, let's keep it on NWSL. Let's let's circle it back yeah. in. This isn't your first time in the postseason in NWSL. In, in fact, in your time in the league, there hasn't been in a moment where you don't know what it's like to not get to the playoffs. You were interim with Houston in 2022, helped them get to their first ever playoffs. Gotham in their incredible storyline last year, worst to first, and now in the brink of a, of a semifinal. So how has some of that previous playoff experience sort of help you prepare for what's in front of you? Yeah, well, definitely the experience is, is important. I think... Uh, for me, and when we speak internally, it's, it's always about us, about being prepared. Today, I was speaking a little bit with with Macaul, and what we speak all the time is about don't try to change things now, and and try to do things that is not who we are. We we know who who we want to be on a football pitch individually, collectively, and it's about pushing that. And, I don't know, maybe I'll, uh, from my experience as well, it's not changing anything in regards to preparation and making sure the players have their own, you know, their own way of doing things, how how we've been used to do during the whole year. So I think that part is also important. And and I think the rest is down to the experiences of the season. You know, I think the other day when, when we won the game in the 97th minute, we were talking internally, obviously we were winning, we conceded a goal, We the players came over because there was one of those moments and with, you know, I asked and Tierna said, what we talk in that moment and it was about look like stick to the game plan and stick to who we are it's gonna come it, we, and, and then the last goal is probably you know a very big show of, of how we committed to as a team defensively both sides of the pitch working hard for each other and then being able to through through our press to recover the ball fantastic creativity on the final third and be able to win in the game no so in the 97th minute so i think that it's, it's about that. It's about sticking to who we are and making sure the players know what they need to do defensively to express themselves offensively. And they've been fantastic with that, whatever they're starting, coming off the bench or, or not even in, in the, on the pitch. No? Even you just running through that last quarterfinal, you make it sound so easy. Yeah. You make it sound just matter of fact for your team because that's kind of how you are as, as a coach. I mean, that's why you're nominated again for NWSL Coach of the Year. And even you telling us your story pre-Wikipedia 2011, it, it, managerial brain has been in you the entire time. But what if you were doing something else what would you be doing right if soccer were outlawed tomorrow what would Juan Carlos I would, do? what I would love to do it would be like probably be a food critic I would love to do my job <laughs> you know like, or a food critic or one of these people that write like uh, tra travel guides or something like that I would love to do Maybe. what's your favorite kind of food that you eat I, I can eat everything, trust me. But obviously, oh, wow. Spanish, Spanish food, I love it. I think it's, you know, a bit unknown still around the world, but I love Spanish food. I'm a big advocate. I speak here a lot with, with our chef, Chef Tony, who is one of the signings of the year that you guys don't, don't know, but he's been super important to who we are as well. And, and yeah, I love food. I love traveling. I love people. And, you know, that comes with football as well. No, the, the traveling for sure. <laughs> with, the, with the schedule we've had, I've traveled a lot this year, but maybe okay. some people as well for fun would be would be good. Okay. Food, I have a follow up. Sorry. A food. So, a food critic. What's one critique of American cuisine that you have over, developed over the last couple of years? Well, I don't know. I think I actually like, I, I like when they take care of things. I, you know, I think sometimes it will be better if, if there is more care with the food. I think that would be something that I would say. And then for me, maybe with the cultures or how it is in Spain, like eating is always like a, 
you know, it's like an event with the people, you know, I think in America or even in England, sometimes it's just seen like something that you have to do to stay alive sometimes during the day. Well, in Spain, it's like, okay, so we're eating, we're eating, you know, that, that's like everyone gets together. And, and I know like in America, you know, when you guys do family reunions or, you know, I've been lucky enough to be here for a couple of the Thanksgiving, which is a fantastic time. And, and you know, I think you guys do it, but I think in Spain, it's like continuously, you know, every day there is a time for life to you know when i tell people that you know lunch is 20 minutes or half an hour people is like what you know two hours two hours you know, <laughs> but it's it's a bit different probably what is the around it more than than the food itself so you would like to critique potentially do you cook food are you a chef i try but i sometimes i run out of time but it's actually something that gives me a little bit of a space on on my head and i i love it it's you know like i'm always i'm passionate about like the, I love carbonara, I love the Spanish omelette. So I'm always trying to perfect those, those two recipes, but my wife will be like, yeah, but the, what about the rest? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I try, I try. I love cooking with my son, Luca, like he, he loves like being around it and break whatever I'm doing. So it's good. If you were to have us over for a meal, what would you cook us? I'd probably carbonara. Mm. Nice. We have right. a glass of red wine, so you like it. You probably like it a little bit more. <laughs> we don't, so we don't critique the food? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that would be the trick. Spanish wine. <laughs> I love that. Let's have a little bit more fun. I have a, I have a fun soccer one. Um, you have so much ex uh, coaching experience from your brother as, as a teenage to, to now fully professional with, with women athletes. If you were to have a, a, a dream player, that you could get the opportunity to coach. It could be past, present, future, maybe no one on Gotham. Uh, who, who, what's a what's a dream player you'd like to have the opportunity to, to try and coach one day? But are we talking like somebody that existed or somebody? It could be, it could be either retired, present, whatever. I, mean, I think to be honest, I've been super lucky to coach people that actually inspire me. You know, I think how, Having the privilege to coach Ali Krieger last year was something that, you know, you know how people play and how people is in certain ways, but you don't really know until you you really coach them. So, you know, having coach Ali was really, really special and important to me. She, she, she was an amazing leader, amazing player, amazing person. Uh, but then in that category, I can also put you know, definitely Kelly and my time with Alex was also very, very impactful. You know, those three players maybe are players that you guys know and they are now all retired. So I don't have to, you know, like go too much into it. But those three definitely impact me and, you know, how to be how to be a mom, how to go through barriers, how to fight for, for the women's game and at the same time be a top professional and a top athlete. Um, and then maybe someone that you guys know a little bit less, uh, maybe Jenna Skilachi was the captain of of Tottenham for the 10 years so a big part of the time that I was there and you know how it's you know never late to achieve your dream and really put everything on the line and I think you can take a lot of things from on the pitch and off the pitch you know I'm a big believer that on the pitch players and coaches we show who we are a lot and who we are off the pitch is, is for me even more important than who we are, we are on it and you know I think those four players if you mix them you could get you could get a fantastic fantastic ideal player maybe we will have to get the speed from somewhere else because none of those three <laughs> or four were especially quick but you can take the speed from tom wachawinga and then it will be perfect there you go there thank you, you go. for not thank you for not saying like luis suarez or something like that thank you no, no, <laughs> It sounds like a pretty lethal five aside right there too yeah he was the coach Ooh, watch dangerous. out dangerous but even i mean the the players that you touched on you talked about how they helped you as a coach and, and changed your perspective and taught you things but um whether it was growing up or as a professional coach or anything what's the best advice you've ever been given the best advice for me is always like you, it's been always about keep believing on yourself and following your dream, whatever is the the barrier. You know, I think it's is we always are in this journey that you try to get to somewhere, but you we all never get there, no. So I think it's about enjoying that. And then there is gonna be problems. There is gonna be barriers. You know, I was 
I was rejected from summer camp jobs in my career. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, when obviously very young, but I mean it's never it's never finished, and it's like always about keep keep going. You know, like we we're gonna lose more than we win. It's gonna be more disappointments than happiness, but. You just need to keep keep believing in yourself and and take the experiences, the positives, and keep going. Yeah, well said. I don't know. I don't know if we can keep it going. I feel so motivated right now, <laughs> even just, just with him share, sharing the advice. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we can follow follow I that up. It. I, I think it. you can apply that to everything. No, I'm yeah. sure you guys, as journalists or whatever, any person that's probably watching us, like that, they might be on their own journey and. There is always a barrier, something that you need to keep pushing. But if it's your passion, I think it is, it is always, a, you know, something to that deserves to fight for, you know. And and that's normally yourself, no. If yeah. his inspiration isn't enough to vote for him for twenty twenty four to the year, maybe it's making a case. It's like, where work. am I supposed to ask now about like tapas or something? Like, no, like it was, yeah. just <laughs> it was great. That was awesome, Coach. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good luck this weekend. Thank you. It's always a game of details. So hopefully we got that little bit of luck and we can be in the, in the championship final again in, in Kansas City for sure.